I want to welcome you to another portion of the show. All right, welcome back, folks. Thank you again for coming back. I always appreciate that. I've been uh, checking this guitar here, the one I unboxed, the uh, Hummingbird, and uh, put a whatever these these are called. What are they called, man? The reed humidity. I can't think. I never can think when that thing runs. Put one inside the guitar, covered the the, lid, the hole with a plastic uh, lid. I just want to look down in there now and see what, get an idea of the humidity inside the box of this guitar. Actually, a, a pretty good idea I'll get of the humidity content of the wood. It looks like it's 69%. Wow. In the house here, where we are right now, it's 76% indoor humidity. humidity. 76% in this room. Inside this body, it's 69 percent. If you put uh, one of these gauges, and I'm, I can't think of what it's called. <laughs> if you put one of them in your guitar, though, and leave it 24 to 36 hours, 69 percent humidity. Leave it 24 to 36 hours, then you can get uh, a pretty good idea of what the wood content, humidity content of the wood is. That's what I was doing, and that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, I'll work on this later. Anyways, we'll go down in this guitar today. We're going to get to hear it today with these old strings, because I'm going to tune it up, check everything, log everything. Uh, you know, the action and the neck relief, and the nut action and all that. Log everything, so when I set it up with the new strings and everything, and we're going to put a pick guard on it when the pick guard arrives. I couldn't believe. You look up real Gibson pick guards for a Gibson Hummingbird that are engraved, not painted, or drawn on, or printed, but a real pick guard with real engraving on it. Unbelievable cost for just a pick guard, man. Right up around 150, 200 bucks. <laughs> We're not going to put a pick guard like that on it, though we did look at some like that, and the owner decided to go with the, the printed one for right now. I told him he could always take it off and, you know, just heat it a little bit and pull it off which we're going to do to this one when the, the printed one arrives. But today, I thought we would use this. Y'all remember that? I don't know if you can see it or not. It looks like it's glaring. We're going to go down inside the guitar and uh, check the braces and everything. We'll do that first, and then we'll tune it up and see what it sounds like. So let's do it! Do it! Do it! All right, here we go. You guys remember this tool, right? See, we're looking... At the guitar strings there. But what I'm going to do is look at it through this. And then I'm going to, uh, I'm turn a, got a little camera here with a light built in the end of it. We're just going to look at the braces inside of here for right now. And of course I'll show you video from this device as well as video from the uh, camera. Let's see. There we go. See there? I can see all the braces and crap in there. And just check it out for some loose braces mainly. Both of those look pretty good. This also records sound, and in this video I'll be switching from one camera to the other. Back in oh, those braces are tight man check that out see the glue there they did a good job cleaning the squeeze out of the way <laughs> they don't always do that you know those of you who've been around here a while know that I'm not going to show all of this on the camera but I will show a portion of it this thing's funny man because sometimes when you need to move a camera a certain way to see something catch myself moving this part of it <laughs> instead of what I need to move all right let's back out a little bit I'm gonna look up in the front part of the guitar wow it's a good job that's a 
a good job on that, the glue I'm talking about. That's the neck block right there. The bottom of the upper belt, and it's part of the one of the braces. What I'm seeing here, these braces look good, man. This thing's very hard to hold steel. I mean, wow, it's just almost impossible to do. Let me look at the other side of these braces. There you see the neck block up there again. And that looks good. And if I can get it to go up to the top now, not a lot of trouble. I hope this thing's recording. I think it is. Hold on. <laughs> of course, I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way, too, with a mirror and a light. I forgot how to turn it on. There we go. It's just got a little light built in the end of it. Well, I got these strings tied back. So I'm going to check all these braces, look at them. And they do look good. What I'm seeing. X brace there and there. And voicing bars back there. They look good. That one, uh, that one limb on the X brace looks like it might be loose. Wow. I don't know if I can show you guys that or not. Well, I didn't see that in the video that I just took in there. Let's have some more look at that. Have some more look at it. I'm going to see if I can show you guys this. I don't know if I'll be able to or not. I'm going to get you. See if I can show you that old one. Alright, see what I mean? That brace there. See, it kind of looks like it's loose right there. I just want to see if I can take a feeler's gauge and stick into that or not. Here's a five thousandths feeler's gauge. You can see it's very thin. And uh, see if I can stick it into that on that brace or not. It's right there. No, nope, it won't go in there. Anywhere along that brace. That must be, maybe that's a shadow we're seeing there. It's got to be a shadow because uh, that won't go in it. It's just, it's the X-brace, this part of it that comes down this way. Right here is the center of the X-brace and it's the uh, extension that comes down this way. It just looks that way. I think it was a shadow. Look one more time at it. Maybe I can get up closer to it with this. Right, let me find it first again. There it is. Oh, it's glue. There was a big, uh, there was a really big squeeze out right there. Someone wiped it away, but they didn't get all the glue. That's what it is. Okay, we're good there. Good to go so far. So good. So far, so good, so good, so good. Another way, while well, I've got these strings pinned back here, is you can. Well, they're going to make all kind of noise. I'm not going to be able to hear anything like that. Let me figure something else out, and I'll bring you back. This is just foam. Piece of foamy crap. I don't know if I can get it under there or not. Yeah, there we go. That's good enough. That'll keep the strings from making any racket. guitar has a loose brace in it, you're going to hear it doing this. Take a fleshy part of your finger and go all over the back and the top. I've got a hundred videos showing how to do this. Put something between the strings, you know, so they can't make any noise. You can see what I did there.
there's something. Oh, it's a pick. It's a strap button. Here's loose. I'm not hearing any loose braces. Don't hear them and didn't see them. This is very good. All right, guitar is in tune and up to pitch now. And I just want to uh, get everything together here and read the nut action. I got a 10 and an 8 right here. That top string, first low E, is more than 18. That is 18. That is. It just barely is going under there. Man, that's 18 and perfect. Check that out. <laughs> 18 thousandths. I'm not going to touch that, man. Just leave that alone. Ah, where's the capo at when you need it, man? Ain't the one I was wanting, but it'll do. Maybe this is it. Nah, that's just like the one I got. Wow! Never can find anything when you need it. Ain't that how it always is? <laughs> this one will work. I was just looking for that other one. It would have been a lot quicker. Now I've lost the... Uh... Here they are. I like to see my acoustics set at 12,000. There's a 12. Now we know this has got a ski jump back here, so I'm going to come down here come down here about the 17th fret or so, because we know, if I, look, if I look back here, we're going to have all kind of, see, yeah, because that ski lift, so come down about the 17th fret, and i got to get down here where I can see it, I can't see it, sometimes I forget everything when I turn that camera on, I was saying, because we know there's a ski jump back here, okay, so I'm not going to note back here, I'm going to note about the 15th fret or so, I have twelve thousands here. That's exactly what it is. Some of them that might be a little bit less than twelve. But that's okay. Yeah, it's a little bit a little bit less than twelve. It's lifting the string. This is a tiny bit, not very bad, but I can see it doing it. Well y'all probably think I'm nuts, man, with shorts on and a big sweatshirt. But I promise you, there's nothing wrong with the arms, man. It's just sunburned to death, that's all. <laughs> Eczema is not here anymore. <laughs> all right, let's check. Uh, string action. I hope I can find that. Man, I really got my shit together tonight, don't I? Wow. Yeah. I'll find it here in a few days. The high E string at the 12th fret is 464, so you couldn't get that any better than that, I don't think. And 564, that's perfect, man. The low E at the 12th fret, 564, and 464 down here. So he wants me to make a tusk saddle for this. And what I'll do is just make it the exactly same height that is, because that's a good. I could maybe get it a little bit lower than that. We'll see. So I'm going to do a sound comparison with uh, with this guitar. Not on this video, but I'm just going to make a video of me playing it with these strings and this setup. And it's the way it is right now. And then I'll make a video in the end after I do all the work to it. What are we going to do? We're going to put a uh, tusk saddle in it. Make a tusk saddle out of a blank. And I'm going to intonate it. And eventually, when the pick guard comes in, we're going to change this pick guard out. And uh, I, that's all I can think of. Set it up. Do a setup on it. Get the action. He wants as low as I can get it without any buzzing. This thing sounds pretty sweet, man. I'll let you hear just a wee little bit of it here before we go. in this position though. I can't play it like that, but 
but to give you a little bit of an idea of what it sounds like. So stay tuned. It's going to be a series of videos you won't want to miss. Thanks for watching. I don't have no cue ball fix for you. So uh, I'll just say good riddance <laughs> and good uh, peace to you, uh, goodness and tranquility and all that crap. Later, dudes.